Okay, hello everyone. Hi and very good evening to all our guests and viewers. Today our today afternoon we have a special session for the UPM Sports Academy 3 Pulse program. As we have an establishment that very young, vibrant and making its difference in sports, which is the organization with the name depicting its ignites. Okay, today we have a three of our course coordinators with us and it's a pleasure to welcome again uh, Yang Berbahagia Prof. Datuk Dr. Shamala Subramania which is uh, our Director of uh, UPM Sports Academy also Deputy the President of Malaysia Hockey Confederation and Vice President of Olympic Council of Malaysia and uh, Miss Lee Nyo as a co-founder Ignites and Zuan Ming Eng uh, co-founder Ignites also Okay, do I uh, pronounce your name correct, Miss May? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, as we know that UPM Sports Academy will organize uh, an online course in the area of great interest, which is sports event management, foundation level one course from 23rd to 30th of September 2020 under the Three Pulse program. So, Dr. Sham, can you brief us on the UPM uh, Three Pulse program itself? Okay, thank you Zarina for giving us a warm welcome and uh, a warm welcome filled with lots of love to Linio and Ming. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Linio and I happen uh, to be in the same country as Zarina now, <laughs> which is our homeland, Malaysia. And Ming, thank you for joining us from Oslo. Uh, I, I don't know, what time is it there? Oh, it's 9 a.m. All right, okay. So, so good morning to you as well. Eh? It's, it's lovely to have you all on our panel today uh, because it's, it's uh, so international and uh, it's so global uh, uh, in, in its own form itself. Eh? So warm welcome from all of us from UPM to both of you all uh, and uh, in particular the UPM Sports Academy. Uh, we're very honoured to have you all with us uh, as partners to this programme. Eh? As Zarina said it very nicely, uh, you your organization and the both of you all speak volumes about the ability of what young people can do nowadays in magnanimous ways eh? which we will share along the way i'm sure uh, so just to share with you all uh, the upm3 pulse program actually came about uh, an idea last year uh, that uh, you know when you look at the different type of uh, programs that are being uh, made available to people currently yeah? especially in sports i think uh, uh, Linio and Ming, you have shared tremendously on different platforms on Ignite and I know uh, even Linio uh, has shared uh, a lot on the uh, Olympism in action and many different platforms. So if you look at sports people, so many ways people are trying to contribute nowadays and to structure sports. And I think uh, today I'm sure I'm, I'm very excited to hear from both of y'all because y'all are people who are in the heart of the actual thing that moves the sports in this world, which is the Olympic Games, the Youth Olympic Games and multi-sport games. Eh? So if you look at it, sports has totally transformed itself. Um, it's not only about sports people itself. I think the, the respect and the glorification of sports have come a long way that we are one of the special fields that require multitudes of fields to make it a success now. So if you look, if you look at it, we have sports technology, we have psychology, you know, it's uh, sports science, we have different fields. Like. And some of the fields, if you look at it, they are actually not sports related at all. For example, like technology, not specific. Eh? When you look at the, uh, you know, uh, I saw an infographic of Ethos uh, at the last uh, uh, Olympic Games. Eh? Uh, it's fantastic. It's billions of devices. And I and I'm quite certain they, they have the track record of having the highest number of concurrent users so when i teach my networking class in computer science actually i use the olympic network as one of the best examples for the heaviest uh, simultaneous uh, loaded uh, uh, systems so uh, what when, what when we decided how to 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 contribute in its own way as you know very well we all need to be something good in that area uh, you know reading a book and advocating is very different from actually being involved in the sports playing the sports is important but uh, more than playing the sports, uh, also what is equally important is the people who run it as well. So what we did is we decided to focus on three areas. Uh, one, sports management being huge. Why? Because, uh, you know, a, a lot of sports has always been very voluntary from the heart to make you feel better, to foster solidarity. Suddenly, sports has become a professional world where it's running into billions of dollars. 
and the transition of it is now still ongoing at different different levels throughout the world so sports management is one of the biggest thing then uh, we looked into the fact that uh, we looked at sports uh, psychology you know the the tapping of the mind eh? uh, the, you need to be super good at doing that you know to get someone to 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 tap their brains to get fear out of when they're going to play a very important match uh, to do visualization to win a match and and when you look at the titans uh, they're always equal in terms of physical ability and capacity you know it's this that makes the difference uh, you know and uh, pushing so we decided to venture to sports psychology uh, under sports management we have psychometric as one of the main areas you know the the importance of critical thinking and then we also have sports technology and sports politics under sports management uh, it's a, because as you know very well uh, sports politics is always uh, you know something that gives everyone a smile <laughs> but uh, basically you know politics is one of the things that you know young people like you who are venturing into the world of administration is something you will learn uh, that is there to stay and those who endure that politics are the ones who will be have the resilience to actually stay on and do what they have targeted and the final part actually is sports nutrition uh, uh, naturally, as you know, uh, that plays a very big, big role in making the field, uh, you know, level, but not so level in its own way. Uh, so sports nutrition is also an area that we, that we have uh, ventured into. So uh, part of the sports manage uh, three path program, uh, we are focusing on these three main areas. Now. And a lot of things that come in between them, we plug it uh, in between uh, under one of these umbrellas. Now. But these are the so this three pass program is actually a special brand that we want to carry so that people will know that these are the areas we're specializing in. And probably we hope very much we can contribute in any volume or any quantum uh, towards the development of sports, both domestically and internationally. So I hope I answered your question, Darina. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. So it's actually uh, started from last year, right, Doctor? Right. Yes, exactly. Uh. So it's continually uh, for uh, this year. And yes. so for Linio and Ming, you both such an interesting profile and have literally been around the globe being part so many amazing multi-sport events. So I'm sure everyone would like to really get to both of you. So can you please tell more about yourself, about your family background, your education and working experience itself? Please, Minyo. Yep, sure. Um, okay, Ming, I'll, I'll go first and then you can go next. <laughs> So first of all, thank you very much, Professor Shamala, for trusting us uh, to be partners in this amazing Three Pulse program that you are organizing. I think it's a great initiative uh, started by, by, by UPMS, and, and we are really privileged to be part of this journey of yours. So um, a little bit about myself before we go to my, my co-founder. Uh, as Professor said, I'm currently at home because COVID has also made me be at home and actually i i, I have uh, taken this opportunity to spend more time with my family as well uh, but um, basically i have been in the sports world for the past 30 over years since i was a kid i was an athlete before i was representing uh, kuala lumpur and malacca actually in badminton um, and then later on i went on to uh, represent uh, Kuala Lumpur in bowling uh, and then later on also you know because of my sports background I actually managed to get uh, into the University uh, Technology Malaysia and also University Kebangsa Malaysia where I also participated in sport and represented the university in different sports like golf and everything so sport has really all the time been in in my nature and it has been my passion um, and I have my, my father to thank for that because he's also a big, 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 big sports fan. Um, and, and in terms of education, I, I mentioned that uh, I, was, I took my diploma in University of Technology Malaysia and then I did a degree in University of Kebangsa Malaysia, uh, not actually in, in sports science or anything to do with sport. I did actually uh, an IT, tech, uh, a multimedia degree. Uh, focus in <laughs> so I mean I I'm actually in your line, Professor. <laughs> um, but um, 
actually doing that degree made me realize that that I really wanted to pursue pursue a career in sports. While doing that degree, I actually I also managed to get involved in the Malaysian Tampin Bowling Congress, where I was responsible um, for the organization of the Sport Excel Junior Circuit. I think for those of you who are Malaysians, Sport Excel Junior Circuit is a is a very good mm-hmm. development program, and bowling is one of the pioneer and key sports that, that they do. And, and I was privileged to actually host that and organize that uh, for seven years uh, before I went on to study uh, in, in Lausanne for my master's in sport administration. So I have to thank um, you know Malaysia and MTBC uh, for giving me that opportunity to learn more about administration and um, to see a different part of sport because I was always an athlete, you know, and as an athlete in Malaysia, you always want to go to the Olympics, but you cannot. So yeah. I, I got the opportunity in, in a different field to go. And so I, I, I'm, very, I'm very fortunate for that. And, and so I, in 2008, uh, sorry, in 2009, I, I went to um, the International Sports Science and Technology Academy in Lausanne, the capital of uh, the Olympic capital, to study a master's in sport administration. And that was practically my stepping stone into the Olympic movement. Then um, in 2009, when I came back, uh, I joined Singapore 2010. And that was basically, you know, it, it triggered my entire career since then. And, and I met my amazing co-founder here in Singapore. And since then, we have actually traveled the world together in different uh, different events. So we went from Singapore to Innsbruck. Um, and then we diverted a little bit. But uh, I went on to do the Sochi Games. Uh, I went on to do the Buenos Aires Youth Olympic Games, Lillehammer Olympic Games. Um, and many other games, Universia, the, uh, the European Youth Olympic Festival, the Enoch World Beach Games. Uh, and I've been so blessed uh, because of this opportunity that actually Singapore 2010 presented to me. Mm-hmm. And since then, I've been able to experience a multitude of cultures. You know, I, I, went, I was in Bosnia, I was in Argentina, I was in Russia, I was in Austria. And it has really enriched my life to see actually not only in, in Malaysia, but in the whole world to open my eyes to things that are better or worse than what is happening in Malaysia. And I hope uh, that together with you, Prof, uh, for this course, uh, that we will be able to uh, influence and inspire more Malaysians to do uh, what I do. So that's a little bit about me. <laughs> very interesting and very inspired. That yeah. made you a great person, you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, what about you, Ming? Can you tell well, us more um, about you? Yes, of course. And also, yes. just like Mio, thank you very much for your very warm welcome. Um, like Mio, I have grown up with sport. In fact, I come from a family of sailors. Uh, okay. I grew up in Singapore. I am from Singapore, so just next doors to you, even though now I don't live there uh, permanently. Um, but Singapore is home for me. Um, I grew up also thanking my father for his for bringing me into the sports world, because he believed that sport offers a discipline that and it exposes us to challenges and drives us to problem solve in a very different way. And that these skills and experiences in sport are very universal and transferable into the rest of our lives and activities. So I have my father to thank there. Um, I began as a sailor, um, so our family sport, so to speak. Um, competed in that. I became a sprinter um, and I was really useless as a single, uh, as an individual <laughs> uh, sprinter, but I had a lot more fun and uh, a little bit more success thanks to my colleagues when I was uh, running in a team of four, so four by hundred. Um, and then I was a short track speed skater representing Singapore at the 2013 World Cup. I One, one of them, oh. not all of them, <laughs> but it was the it was the uh, qualifying season for uh, Sochi 2014. And so with all the high level athletes there, it was a good thing that I wasn't participating at all. It would have been a bit dangerous for everyone <laughs> with a new <laughs> like new skating there. But that was um, my experience as an athlete. My education actually is not one that is related to sport or sport management. I actually studied fine arts and art history 
uh, it was particularly wow. in painting and drawing. Um, wow. And then eventually I also picked up uh, and start, started studying um, medicine um, and am a wilderness emergency medical technician, uh, uh, technician sorry, um, as well as an instructor in that field. So I am also, I guess in that sense, in the field of academics. Um, <laughs> But with regards to sport events and being in the world of sport events, I was thrown in at the deep end in 2010 with Singapore uh, 2010 Youth Olympic Games in a role that I initially was very uncomfortable with because it had to do with relations work. And that was something I was very nervous about. Um, but I was very grateful for that opportunity and for the mentors in that in in. in in the games actually. And as Mio said, we met in Singapore 2010, so sport brought us together there. But also sport, when playing badminton, brought us together because I met Mio um, on a more un informal level in a badminton game and Mio absolutely trashed us. She was just standing <laughs> all completely still at the court and it looked like she was standing still and there were three of us on the other side of the court trying to play badminton against her. But still, she had all three of us running everywhere on the court. <laughs> um, that says uh, how bad we were at badminton, but also how amazing Neo is at badminton. But um, since Singapore 2010, I went on to other projects, Innsbruck 2012 together with Neo. And as she said, then our paths diverged a little while. I was in Pyeongchang 2018. We, met again in Lillehammer 2016, some other projects in between pertaining to the Olympics and with regards to NOCs. And now together with Neil, we're working on Ignite and some projects pertaining to still the Olympics and Paralympics. Mm -hmm. okay, very interesting and quite a huge project uh, that Ignite <laughs> handle. Eh? <laughs> okay, um, for this second program, Sports Academy made the program collaboration with other experts. So for this time, why Ignite has been a strong partner of program, Dato? Uh, I, I, you know, Linio and Meg, I already told Zanina not to ask me crucifying questions. Favorite <laughs> 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 question, <Dato. laughs> uh, Well, actually, if you look at it, uh, um, you know, uh, today when we look at the global world, uh, it, it is always, a, a, you know, a, an irony how uh, there are still people uh, who are in a very uh, narrow mind to think that they can actually prevail or become great being a singular person. And if you look at it, uh, although, you know, we wish we were superheroes, uh, I love Iron Man. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you look at the Avengers, uh, it's basically like that, Zarina. Uh, when you look at any program that's being done by any organization, as great as we may be, we will only become greater when we pick people to work with, especially those who are highly experienced and qualified in this area. Uh, now, actually, when this idea came up uh, to do event management, uh, it is a subject that I... Can I talk? I can't hear you. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, I got it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Clear. You start again. <laughs> okay. okay. Back, huh? Sorry, uh, uh, that's going to happen because yeah. I can't see yeah, cut off my calls. Huh? <laughs> all right. Okay. So if uh, if, if uh, back again, uh, uh, please please forgive me, uh, all of you all and the viewers as well. Huh? I still figuring out how to stop this call blocking <laughs> when we're going on live. Okay. So coming back coming back to this. Huh? So when you look at event management itself. I've been involved uh, from the 1998 Commonwealth Games. That was my first uh, multi-sport uh, event that I was involved as uh, the IT exec of uh, uh, hockey, women's hockey. And I had this uh, pleasure of working with this Spanish company that was uh, running the whole IT system. And multi-sport and running event today is no joke. It is a serious business. And the quality, when you look at the Olympic Games organization, if you just look at the bid, the bid uh, document itself is amazing, Zarina. Now, when you want to do event management, every one of us can, can actually talk from different scales of experience. But I think uh, I'm very fortunate, uh, you know, uh, to have known Linio for many years. Uh, the main reason of this partnership, actually, and I've, I've met Ming over a few times uh, uh, over the past few weeks, 
uh, on, it could have been better occasion. I was late in replying the call and so on. So I hope, Ming, you still have a good opinion of me. <laughs> but I know, Ming, uh, you are just as wonderful as Linio. But to be very frank with you, uh, the confidence I think the academy has uh, and the excitement we have to work with Ignite is because of the personalities behind Ignite, to be very frank. It is, it is about uh, two individuals with a network of friends. You know, the power of friendship is beyond any power that you can find. You know, you can go and make an appointment, you can meet someone, but if you already have a bond with somebody, yeah, it's totally a different, uh, different kind of strength that you have with it. Now, when you look at event management, eh, I, I know Linio because she was, a, she was and is a very important person in the Olympic movement in Malaysia. Uh, it started with the National Olympic Academy and I've had many, many instances that I have bumped into her many times on social media because she's never in the country. And even for a very long time, I think I've been very amazed by the different multi-sport games that you've been involved. So when uh, Linio came back, and I think it's very fortunate for everybody, you know, that's why this COVID has had many types of different experiences for everyone. I think for us, uh, there's also been a lot of pain to the world, but also it has opened a lot of unexpected avenues for everyone. So when Linio uh, gave uh, a nice phone call to me, it was one of the best phone calls that I received, uh, even for myself and for the academy to have met people like Ming and all the string of instructors and, and great people who are already associated with Ignite. Uh, so when we formed this partnership, Zarina, uh, the academy has our expertise. Uh, yes, Ignite has a fantastic expertise. And these guys, when they talk, uh, they're going to share tremendous amount of knowledge based on hands-on actual experience that beats everything under the sun okay uh, because and, and their volume of uh, experience uh, is at the highest nothing beats the olympic games nothing beats the olympic rings nothing beats uh, world cups uh, and different different paradigms so for the academy, we are very excited about doing this course. And I think uh, just to share a little insight and secret with the, with the viewers, I can't imagine when we uh, open for registration, not even half a day, we're already hitting 60 plus and that hasn't even moved up to an, I, I haven't seen the recent numbers, but it's a tremendous amount. And the beauty is, and uh, now you see different uh, composition of people in the participants. Uh, okay, and uh, honestly, our courses have been uh, received, well received within Malaysia. But we also have got, uh, well, I mean, tomorrow we are starting off a partnership with India, uh, with SGT University in Delhi. And it was fantastic to see that suddenly there was a surge of 82 uh, students uh, registering for the course. But uh, together with Ignite, uh, uh, I give you 100% credit for that, uh, Linio and me, because now we have people from Peru, Colombia, Africa, India, Singapore, and unimaginable countries on the registration list, which I think is uh, the best success that anyone could actually possibly have. Lah. So apart from the instructors being so rich in knowledge, I think the participants coming in is going to be a fantastic kind of situation that's going to, to create. So, uh, you know, uh, Ignite is going to be something to be remembered uh, for a very long time, I'm sure of it. Uh, and I'm very proud to have an opportunity to have uh, uh, us, the UPM Sports Academy, embark this journey together with uh, with them. And and that is the main reason actually why this thing just moves because it's the people. You know, when they give you a phone call and they give you just a, a, a chat uh, and it gives us the inspiration to do it. And today it's materializing and... <laughs> Is it phone call again? <laughs> uh, yes, yes. <laughs> so, uh, Zainia, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, yes, sure, sure. We can hear you. Ah, good. Okay, I, I'm blanked out of the screen again. So, but anyway, that is the reason, Zarina, why we have actually uh, embarked uh, with Ignite, and it's a biggest one of the biggest honors for us uh, as the UPM Sports Academy. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Uh, is we can. We may not uh, see you, but we can still hear you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to okay. log out again and log in again. Eh? <laughs> okay, for okay, sure. Okay, carry on. <laughs> Thank you, Rata. Okay, so for the next question, um, actually, we uh, mentioned about Ignite uh, from the start, but 
uh, unfortunately the brief we give is <laughs> uh, wrong fact. So can you tell me, can you tell us uh, what is Ignite actually and who are the people involved in it? So thanks Narina for, for that question. Um, yes, I think many people out there are still new to the concept of Ignite and what our company is all about. Um, I'm going to give you a bit of uh, the why <laughs> we formed this. And, and <laughs> <welcome back up. laughs> so I'm going to give you a little bit of the why Ignites came about and Ming will go ahead to tell you what Ignites is all about. But um, Professor Shamla, I think you, you said it very well <laughs> in terms of the Avengers in that context. You know, it, 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 it takes a, a group of people that have the same passion to, to create something beautiful, especially in terms of event management and making, making a, a, an event a, a successful and mem memorable one for everybody who participates. So that is, in a way, why Ignites came about. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, Ming and I, we met in 2010 uh, and we are good friends until now. Um, and then actually for Ignites, we have four founders. Uh, it's not only the both of us, uh, me who is from Malaysia, Ming who is from Singapore. We also have a very good friend of ours called Ilva, who is from Latvia. And also we have Gustavo, who is from Brazil. So the four of us, we have known each other for the past decade. We have worked in multiple events together and we have bond that we have had built that bond of friendship. And, and I totally agree with what you said. When friends, when we build trust and we, we build honesty with each other, uh, it's easy to move things forward. And that's why Ignites came about. Um, as we had 10 years of industry experience, we went from one event to another event to another event, sometimes two of us, sometimes three of us, sometimes just one of us. But we always saw a common, uh, a common theme. And that common theme was uh, the lack of knowledge transfer, which actually resulted in the questions and mistakes that are repeated over and over again. So for example, if, if we start planning for, in my field, accreditation in one event, when I go to the next event, it seemed that accreditation had to start all over again. So where was that knowledge transfer? I mean, we do always write post games reports and the IOC actually implements a very good transfer of knowledge program. Um, but we always believe within the four founders, me, Gustavo Ming and Ilva, that writing a report is one thing, getting other people to read it is another thing. But the most important of these reports are the experience and learnings that we get, which cannot be transferable through reports or writing. It has to be practical. So that's one of the reasons why we also built Ignite, because we want to offer our knowledge, our, uh, our experience through workshops, through seminars, through hands-on practical experiences with future event organizers. You know, not simply just writing down, but we, we want to guide them uh, hand in hand. And then um, the fourth thing, the fourth point of why actually uh, Ignites came about is because throughout these 10 years that we have worked together, we have had the privilege to know hundreds of amazing and incredible hardworking sport event professionals. A lot of them do not get the exposure and credit that they deserve uh, because there are so many more um, consultants out there that somehow are uh, taking on the market. So, so what we wanted to do is uh, we wanted to give them the opportunity to be seen and that's why uh, Ignites came about. Okay. And uh, Ming, I think we'll continue. <laughs> you want to add some more? Oh, absolutely. And I agree with Neil. Reports 
definitely do not show how to adapt knowledge into different contexts. And that is one of the huge challenges. And reports, of course, do not always distill to the principles that can then be adapted. But about Ignite, who we are. Ignite is a family of 79 international events experts and enthusiasts. We represent 26 nationalities from across three continents and we are still growing. We have a passion and a desire to make a positive difference in the world. And currently what we are doing is we're providing a specialized consultancy and operational services in combination with active and integrated support and project delivery. Our vision is to ignite that positive change and growth in events through, again, the word passionate and accountable professionals, uh, especially by nurturing and empowering the future of our events industry. Ignite is a strong advocate of education, with it being one of our pillars. And we have been very active on this front on multiple initiatives, including our Ignite's What Is series and our Ignite's Conversations. And you can find this on our social media. If you see our Facebook and our YouTube, you can look back and see the previous episodes and, and watch them if you're interested. We, and I think Neil has mentioned this briefly, we, we represent experience from over 50 events from the past decade and more. And we cover not only the Olympic and Paralympic Games, but the Youth Olympic Games, continental events, international federations, national Olympic committees, national federations, etc. So this is who Ignite is. Okay. Okay, just now uh, we just heard uh, why Sports Academy uh, select Ignite as a partner. So now it would be interesting to know why Ignite has selected UPM Sports <laughs> Academy as a partner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, that very interesting question, Zarina. And, and um, on this note, I actually want to also commend uh, Professor Shamala in what she said, that this COVID period has given us an opportunity to learn new things, to experience a new norm, and to actually take a step back to review our professional and personal lives. So that was what actually uh, Ignite uh, was doing for the past, uh, let's say, five months since COVID started. Because actually, we also uh, started our company officially in March. And March is when COVID hit. So we had to change our focus a little bit. And we did a lot of uh, activities online. And one of the, so to answer your question, one of the reasons why Ignite saw UPM Sports Academy uh, is also because we saw UPM Sports Academy or organizing these amazing online programs. Because I know your Three Pulse program, which was initiated last year, it was more of a physical attendance. Mm -hmm. But because of COVID, you had to change uh, your structure to be an online structure. And this attracted Ignite because we always were looking for uh, partners who were proactive and who always try to move education forward. And that was what UPM Sports Academy uh, was doing. Um, UPM Sports Academy is, well, UPM itself is one of Malaysia's premier and top universities. You know, and it has a very good reputation with a very strong background in sports, having Malaysian national athletes graduate from a variety of programs offered and also sports studies department under the faculty of education so we 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 really look up to upm having that strong background in sports as well upm sports academy as we know is the only sports academy in malaysia established in a <laughs> university ecosystem and when i was reading your vision it says that it envisaged a paradigm shift in sport through the application of latest technologies. And this is actually aligned with what Ignite is all about. We are constantly looking for technology improvement to enhance and uh, to build new policies, new procedures, new business processes in organizing events. So, um, and finally, why UPM Sport Academy is because like Professor Shamala said, I mean, we know each other very long. <laughs> Um, we have worked on several projects uh, side by side in National Olympic Academy, in the Malaysian Olympic Council. Um, before actually I went on this nomadic journey that I had for the past 10 years. And I knew her, one person who has great passion, you know, always 
eager to search for new initiatives and she's a leader in sports and education in Malaysia. You know, she's our vice president for OCM and she's sitting on the education board. She's also the professor of UPM Sports Academy <laughs> and in UPM, you know, so sports and, and, and technology and education really, I, I, I think, is encapsulated in that body of hers. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for us, it was, a, you, a very, it was a very natural choice for us to choose UPM Sports Academy. Okay, so it's a very clear uh, reason. Nothing to do with me. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, next I want to uh, ask this question for Dato. Okay, uh, for this uh, sports event management foundation level one course is the fifth course that you offered after sports psychology sports politics, sports psychometrics, and sports nutrition. So what differentiates between this course and the others that make it extra special? Okay, all right. Okay, one of the things that I think is, is uh, among all our courses is uh, we've been uh, uh, very uh, conservative in our, our demographics of the people who take part in the course, uh, Zarina. Uh, because uh, when, when uh, to be very honest with you, uh, uh, during the MCO, uh, you can see everybody hooked on because I think uh, men never expected to be stuck in the house and you can't go anywhere. And it, it is just an unimaginable period of time uh, that it's quite difficult to recollect how we felt during the time because now every day, you know, life is becoming normal and so on. So when you look at these courses, when you open the courses, uh, you don't know whether you even get three people to register. <laughs> very honest. I, I will be very honest, you know. And... And being in education, uh, one of the things that we want to do is we want people to learn. And the people will come in this very rich uh, planet of ours uh, with the number of courses being offered by even the top of institutions for free. Okay, uh, you, you can imagine the volume of, of uh, competition you're having to attract people to come. So when we open the other courses, we uh, we have received very wonderful response, uh, more than 100. And, and you know, uh, Delinio and Ming, to share with you, uh, the first course that we introduced, I told Zarina, who's the program coordinator who's uh, tortured to death by, by us, you know, uh, even Zarina is, uh, is a staff who's very senior. But as you know, uh, one of the things in online learning is coming online. It's not easy, although you don't get to see the whole world watching you, but you know the whole world is watching you and, you know, she has to suddenly become a moderator of this entire session. Eh? So, uh, you know, I, I, when, when we ventured into this, so I told Zarina, uh, Zarina, I think we need to call a few people and ask them to send their people for our courses because I think maybe we won't have. And that morning, when I was having breakfast with her, I told her, so have you checked how many I have registered? So she told me, she gave me a very... Uh, you know, a very innocent smile and told me, no, I haven't checked, doctor. Uh, anyway, I don't think maybe many or anyone has registered. And I, I will never forget when we went and on the, the response, it was 36, you know. And, you know, our office literally always jumped up and down because it was 36 within about five hours of putting it. Uh, we uploaded it almost close to midnight and there was already 36 and the numbers just shot up until we had to control it, you know. Uh, so that was a response that was special to most of our courses. And another thing that's interesting about the courses that we had is the speakers. Uh, we, have a, we have a unique combination in the academy. We use our in-house talent of UPM, but we also acknowledge the fantastic people outside as fellow consultants to us to do the program in a collaborative way. So what's special about uh, working with Ignite on this event management? Uh, number one, I think it's going to be a full-fledged course. Uh, because working with Linio and Ming is not easy. <laughs> they are very meticulous because as Ming put it very nicely, there is an entire, how many, 75 people be, be behind you all, Ming? Uh, there's an entire thing. So when you send a message to Linio, it will come back with the reply of about 100 people's feedback at the back of Linio's singular email. <laughs> okay, so when we decided, when we wanted to do this program, when we wanted to work, we thought, okay, maybe it's a one-day course and it's going to be three hours. But it turned out to be a six-day course. And I think uh, we've had numerous discussion when to position the course. Because there are participants from different parts of the world. 
uh, you know, uh, we're having time difference. We're having also, uh, you know, uh, Linio has been very graceful uh, with Ming to give a lot of importance to the logistic part of running this course. So the timing is uh, very suitable to many continents and uh, and we've come up with that. So that's another special thing. The the thing that makes it different is one, the depth of the course. Uh, with the other courses, we have taken an approach to even uh, break down the foundation level. You know, foundation is already foundation. <laughs> Uh, we've actually broken foundation into level one, level two, which is in a way absurd in its own way. But why we have to do that is because now post MCO, uh, people feel uh, there they are different clusters of people. Some clusters are still going on online. There are a majority of clusters going on to back to normal and do not want to acknowledge the online platform uh, because they want to resume life normal uh, normally by having physical courses, going to places and so on. Then there's another group of clusters that uh, see that when you're online, it's actually guilt-based. What are you doing online? How do you have time to watch an online webinar? Aren't you doing any work? Uh, so there's another cluster of, of those people we need to deal with, which is a spectrum. So what we've done is we've divided the time, but this is the first course that is going full foundation. So, and, 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 it, and it has its, uh, its hours, okay? Uh, so and, and as uh, earlier we mentioned, the speakers are people who are very qualified to speak in each section and people who have experience. And I've uh, watched a few of Ignite's uh, uh, partnership with, the, with you know, uh, programs. And it's amazing the way they talk because they have facts and figures, which is something that is very revealing and very interesting. And I think we are very fortunate to listen to those kind of statistics and experiences, which makes this uh, extra special from the special ones that are going on. Uh, so I'm very sure by end of September, uh, when we take off all our other courses uh, in October, uh, this is going to open two very big dimensions to the other course. One, there will be participants who are aware that we exist with our courses. And uh, two, it's also the dimension of depth that we want to get into so that what will be the outcome of this program, Zarina. So that, that is actually what makes this course totally uh, a different dimension uh, compared to our other courses, which are done at uh, very small scales uh, of time, because bearing in mind that people have gone back to work, and now we need to make this online platform a formal official platform for people to actually treat as a training uh, that will be received well. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. So that is the reason yeah, which make make it extra special, I thought. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now we're back to Linio and Ming. Okay, as we can see from the previous infographic in our Facebook page, there are lots of speakers or course instructors from all over the world. So I'm very excited to know who are these proposed instructors involved in this program. If you can explain or describe the background of the speakers and the countries which they have come from. Please share with, with us. Absolutely. Um, so our course instructors come from around 10 countries, including Great Britain, Argentina, Malaysia, Brazil, Singapore. And we cover events from, and we have um, in our experience covered events from 2010 until now, and actually slightly before 2010 as well, with experiences from the Olympic and Paralympic Games, the Youth Olympic Games, continental events, um, also representing international federations, national federations, and continental associations. And of course, in combination with the other activities and the varied backgrounds of our speakers. Our instructors come from those who have lived and worked on events uh, from the inception of the events through the delivery to the dissolution of events. And Professor Shamala, Lino, and myself will also be course instructors. But since this is a sneak preview, uh, one of our speakers is Vanessa Sales from Brazil. She is a planning and integration expert at the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy uh, for Doha 2022 FIFA World Cup. So if you love soccer, um, she has 18 years of experience in sport project and event management. She's currently working, as I mentioned, with the planning and integration team for uh, Doha and was also involved in the Tokyo 2020 uh, Olympic and Paralympic Games project uh, when she had the opportunity to deliver the sport delivery plan program and to plan also the sport operations center for the test events and games time. 
uh, followed by the Rio 2016 project, which was fully dedicated from 20, uh, 2008 to 2016 in different sport planning activities. Vanessa acted as a sport manager, sorry, a project manager of the sport department in the Brazilian Olympic Committee for almost two years. She's incredibly passionate about sport, manage, uh, sport management and this career as well since 2002 when she started her journey in the Brazilian Blind Sport Federation. So uh, women of many talents and of incredible experience there. So this is the profile of one of our instructors. And we'll see a little sneak peek into, into what you will see. You will find that all of our instructors are incredibly passionate speakers who are very keen on sharing their knowledge and educating because all of us know from firsthand experience how difficult it is to access this kind of knowledge, especially firsthand knowledge is not easy to get gain access to. You probably have to know someone that, who has worked in the field before to be able to ask them. And then even if you know someone, what are the questions that you need to ask? So these are the challenges that we have, especially if you're beginning. And even if we're already in the field, sometimes it's difficult to know what questions to yeah. ask as well. Uh, but we are strong advocates, absolutely, and believers of education, since we know it's vital to continued innovation in this field, in, in the world, in fact, and revitalization of policies and processes. It allows this evolution and it promotes multifaceted thinking, hopefully, while also sparking curiosity for further things further afield. As, as Professor mentioned, it's sport is not, and events are not only about our very specific area, it, it extends further beyond that, whether in technology or in other fields as well. And of course, we also recognize education is not only a one-way street. What better way to practice lifelong learning than to share and to teach? So while we are hoping that our speakers will provide some learnings from our sharings, we are also going to be learning from the participants of this program. And of course, we are very excited to reveal who all the instructors are after this sneak preview. So if you keep an eye on our website, ignites.events, you will be able to see the, the reveal, so to speak, of our various instructors. Okay, so you are exposed to uh, three of them already. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Okay, uh, so we know already for, about the speakers. Uh, so can we now please the details? What are the contents that we share to those who are very interested for this course? Absolutely. We have six modules um, that we will be going through. So the introduction and planning module, um, which includes type of sport events and the life cycle of a, of a sport event. Good governance, which is absolutely uh, key to the foundation of sport events. And then of course, foundation planning and integration by Vanessa, who I've already mentioned, marketing and sponsorship. So that's introduction and planning. Then we have our second module, which is about services. For example, registration, accreditation and access control uh, by Neo, uh, accommodation, catering, cleaning and waste. All the things that go on behind the scenes that hopefully nobody hears about because the event <laughs> is going so well. Then of course we have our module three, which is operations, uh, sport and venues, technology. Then we have a module four, again, operations, our part two of operations, human resources, people management, uh, protocol and hospitality, media operations. In module five, we're looking at implementation of all of this knowledge. So we have discussions about client experience. Uh, we'll also be looking at risk and issue management. So as, as our as our events are implemented. Then in module six, we're looking at post event. So what happens after the event is over? It doesn't just end there, mm. it carries on. So we're looking at dissolution, we're looking at legacy, so the long-term impact of events and sustainability. So this is just a brief overview of what we'll be looking at in the six modules uh, over the six days for this course. Okay, it's a little bit details and interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't wait. <laughs> I may uh, register for your course on. <laughs> okay. Please do. <laughs> for sure. Okay, uh, for this course, um, is there any fees or charges that the participants should pay to attend this course? Nato? You give me all the difficult questions. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, question. Okay. Uh, any 
Anyway, Ming, you eloquently presented the course so very well. Huh? So beautiful. Like, even uh, if, if I was not part of it, I would sign up for it just to see <laughs> your deliberation. Huh? Okay. Thank you. So uh, generally, if you look at, uh, at, at uh, charging a certain amount of, uh, of uh, volume, huh? uh, I think the fees is not so much. I think both for the Academy and Ignite, uh, the reason why we are doing uh, and pursuing this kind of online education is basically... Uh, we want to empower, inspire uh, people in the sports world, okay? But of course, naturally, in order to do that, uh, there would be some form of uh, fee is one word, but an, a kind of commitment from the participant. You see, uh, when you deal with participants, even whether it's physical or online, eh, uh, you when you don't make people commit to a cause, uh, they will have the possibility that if something urgent happens, this may take a second priority uh, in, in that sense, okay? So, uh, uh, one of the examples I always use in all my talks is the difference when you buy a mineral water yourself and if someone gives you mineral water. You can see the occasion of, uh, you know, people who are responsible, who are so-called green friendly and so on, they have a marker and they write their name. But I never carry a marker. And most of the time, I drink the water halfway and then I forget which is my bottle. And if I'm thirsty, I am irresponsible. I take another bottle, another new bottle, because I, I don't know which bottle to throw because I don't know which one is mine. But if I bought a bottle of mineral water or anyone were to buy, you will have an association to that bottle because you have committed to that water and it's yours. Okay, so it, 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 is, a, it is a syndrome among men. Uh, to be committed, you know, we have many cases, people register 182, the ones who turn up is 132. And this, uh, you know, uh, 50 who disappear, don't even have an inclination, the amount of work all of us have gone through in preparing the certs, in preparing the material and so on and so forth. So coming to fees, it is important to have it in the structure of any courses uh, possible because it is a serious commitment. But in the world of education and sports, to be very frank with you, especially sports, I think this on uh, education is something relatively gaining momentum. And you see, in, uh, in, in the field of computer science, like the field I'm in, uh, you, you will probably, as technology come up suddenly, yeah, we will sign up for courses that maybe cost 3,000 ringgit for three days or 12,000 ringgit for 10 days because we want to learn the technology fast at that moment because otherwise you're going to be left behind. So we will invest in, in gaining education. But when you look at sports, uh, and if you're associated to sports itself, sometimes you feel the knowledge you got when you started playing the sport or coaching the sport is enough to sustain all through with a little bit of innovation in between by looking at YouTube and so on. So to be very frank with you, from being a sports person, I think uh, empowering the sports family to know that there are many courses available and you have to want to invest, that is something new. Okay. But for people to want to invest, uh, you know, Zarina, I'm sure Ming and Linio will agree. Even when I want to invest in a course, I want to know whether I will gain something good out of it. Because especially sports people, they're very highly equipped in their knowledge. So if they're attending a course, they really want you know, we are in a position, you're speaking to great guys who run events, you know. So when they listen to you, they want to listen to something that's better. So before they invest, irrelevant of how uh, beautiful our portfolio looks, uh, both UPN Sports Academy and Ignite, this is why we are given great thought that we're not going to charge anything for the uh, first set, first cycle of it. And I'm, I'm really humbled by Linio and her team, and of course our UPN Sports Academy team, because for the magnitude, like Vanessa just now, to appear in a talk for even 20 minutes is already beyond comprehension of what value it would hold. And they're all so big-hearted to not even worry about that and to do it because they want to empower. Uh, so the first one uh, is uh, we're not putting any charges, but we're going to put a structure because the uh, you know this course as an academician i myself have gone through this course it's fantastically detailed so we're going to come up with uh, one clause most of our upn sports academy course certificate of participation irrelevant of whether there's a fee or not we do issue out certificate but this time around the course is free 
but we are going to get a certification of competence at the end. That means uh, we want the participants to be serious. And when you finish the certificate of competence, you can be uh, you can imagine by the number of speakers, if they certify you are competent in that, it will carry of great value. Uh, so the certificate is going to be a, a chargeable amount, but the cost will be free, Zarina, for this round. Huh? Okay, thank you, Doctor. I hope uh, it's clear for all viewers out there. Uh, you must grab these opportunities. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So back to Linio Ignite side. <laughs> okay. The cost, uh, as we know, because we run on twenty third and uh, until thirtieth September twenty twenty. So it's about six day. Six day course, okay. So why does it does it take six days? Oh, well, <laughs> like what Professor Shamala said, you know, at first we, we thought like, okay, let's just do one day, three hours. But then when we brainstormed together with Ming and and our core team with Dr. Shamala as well, we realized that learning in three hours in one day about sport event management doesn't cut it even for a foundation level because there is so much information in different areas and coming back also to what professor shamala said you know to make an event successful there are so many elements you have the element of technology you have the element of sport you have the element of protocol so all these if we want to bunch it into one day definitely no so we decided um, to take a six days so that we can at least scratch the surface of each of these topic to give and empower and uh, the, the participants to understand um, the basics, planning, organizing, managing that particular area itself. If it was up to me and Prof and Ming, I think, <laughs> we would actually do six weeks, you know, of, of this course. <laughs> enough for all the information that is needed to run a successful event um to be fair and to be honest i mean i i did a sport event management not sport event management i did a sports management administration course uh in lausanne and even though it's a master's executive course it took me at least seven months of theoretical to pass and right now we are actually uh, compacted in. Of course, this is just foundation level one, like Professor Shamala said, and it's six days. But I think the information that you will get uh, from these six days will be able to equip you to to successfully organize uh, your event. So that's why it's six days. <laughs> that's why, yeah, six days. <laughs> okay. Uh, so what is the other X factor that you can offer to participants? participant to join your course. Ming, you can share with us? Oh, absolutely. I think we've touched on a lot of these earlier, but um, pretty briefly, I think the X factors that our team will bring are the exciting insights into the world of events from the operational side, uh, through our own personal experiences and our varied experiences, as well as insights into how we apply this knowledge, not only in differing events, but also across various cultures and adapting it to different contexts and resources. Um, also, we have the passion and the excitement, um, as well as an embodiment of those who are not afraid of change, those who are always looking for opportunities of innovation and growth and sustainability as well. Those who are um, keen to promote and to build cultures of cooperation and collaboration and community. I think some of the things that uh, we have mentioned earlier as well. Hmm. So. Okay, thank you. So that's um, why we should join the, the <laughs> course, right? Okay, uh, so before we end uh, to this preview and to summarize for our discussion, so what is your hope for this course? Nato, go first. Oh, uh, okay, uh, the, the, my, actually for this course, one of the main things that I really hope very much is, uh, you know, there are many people who are very interested in doing events. Uh, running it well and making an impact is of paramount importance. Uh, you know, you cannot simply just organize an event, even when you want to learn how to do a bid document, 
uh, when you want to pre-prepare a country for uh, to bid for the Asian Games or the Commonwealth Games or, or the Olympic Games, it starts with the grassroots tier. It, and it starts for multi-tiers. But it's always, you know, the end always determines the means. So, you know, when you know, when you get an opportunity like this to know what happens at the high-end part, it's very easy to start training from the grassroots. Uh, so if you already know, okay, at the Olympics, they do it at this volume, then at my district level, when I'm doing a game, it will, it will be scaled to this level. That's my first hope. Number two, I really uh, hope very much uh, we will get the participation of everyone to be very engaged in this course because I think the time taken to prepare this course is tremendously high uh, and all the speakers have taken so much of, of time and uh, precision to do it well. But any course will only have meaning if the participants are serious about it. That means engaging in the course is important. Asking questions, uh, giving us the, you know, that, that giving us the inspiration that we have to rise further. Uh, the standards will depend on the the people involved in the course. Uh, we, uh, in the seriousness. Number three, I, I hope very much that many in young uh, people in sports, uh, uh, in, and I think uh, uh, one uh, one new thing that I learned about Linio is I never knew she was a badminton player. Uh, uh, this is what happens when you're very close and you still don't realize what goes on in each other's life. Uh, and uh, Ming, you're in sailing. Many people who are in sports uh, and retire from sports, uh, being a sportsman or many people who like sports who want to make a profession, this is a golden opportunity for no, you to not. learn this is a golden opportunity for them to learn from uh, you know uh, young inspiring people who are making so much of effort in believing they will make a difference so Linio and uh, Ming I wish I knew the rest of people behind you as well uh, but I think you both speak volumes about what can people make a difference in the world and not in a in a small world, you know, uh, you know, it is always a very personal belief of mine eh, that it is very difficult for people to even make a difference in our own lives. To make our own lives better is already so difficult, you know, making your life difficult for your family, uh, making your life di uh, different uh, with your family is even also difficult. Just imagine young people like this are making a difference, not only in one con country, not only in one continent, but around the whole world. So this is this is also another opportunity, and I'm very proud on, on behalf of UPM Sports Academy that our team will get to work with very inspiring people like this. That, that is the meaning behind this course, actually, as well. Uh, it is a statement of how the Olympic solidarity actually works together, isn't it, Linio? Uh, how the bond of family has formed together and how partnerships like this can flourish. Uh, so I really hope very much, uh, Zarina, that uh, the participants who, who join in our program uh, will give us uh, the platform for us to do our best because that's already on the table already. Uh, I hope we will get the engagement. And then as we grow this course bigger, uh, many more high quality events will be organized. And, uh, and, and, the, and the, the world of sports will move to a different dimension, just like the, uh, the world of stock market, just like engineering, uh, just like the field of law. Uh, so much honor will be given to sports when we organize events, uh, even if if majority of them are going to be people who do it from the heart, who are volunteers. So that's my hope. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Dato. And Linio, if you want... Yeah, I think <laughs> Professor Shavala basically summarized also what, uh, what me and me wanted to say, but... Um, Definitely, we hope that the participants would learn and experience from those who have lived it, who have the passion, and who always want to try to, to make a difference because they are always moving and they are not complacent. Just because you have organized an event, it doesn't mean that it went perfectly, you know, and we strive to, to better processes, better policies, make it more sustainable, make it more cost effective make it more memorable for the clients. Um, so we hope that participants of this course will be able to experience 
the passionate event professionals that will be speaking uh, during the course and for those of them who who haven't actually considered a career in sports event management before mm. maybe this can inspire them exactly. you know um, because to let them know that actually sport is not simply about competition it's not simply uh, about athletics participation but sport can can be so much more there are so many mm, facets to sport um, at the same time we hope that the young participants or young students that are uh, interested in the course and take the course uh, we hope that we will be able to offer guidance to some of the questions that they may have if they had a, a, actually pondered the thought of saying like i love sports but what can i do with it so i hope that we will be able to answer that okay and I think last question that, Ming, if you, are, you have last word Absolutely. Um, I think to add to what Neil has said, we are also hoping that our participants will realize that these learnings can be implemented not only in sport events, but in other areas. These are incredibly universal and transferable skills. So even if you walk away from this going, okay, well, maybe sport events are interesting to me, but maybe sport events are not interesting to me, these skills still can be transferred from microcosm to, from small events or small activities to very large activities. Um, a good friend of mine who works in the sports industry uh, and who we worked who worked on an Olympic Games and also Youth Olympic Games, when he held his wedding, he was able to use all of his skills <laughs> and all of his knowledge on event management to basically organize his own wedding. And of course, the fun part of it is that because it's a job hazard, so he started to refer to everything the way that we do with all the abbreviations. He had to ar arrange transportation, <laughs> arrivals and departures and so on. But it, it, I suppose it's a little silly to use this example, but it's very universal skills. So that's one. And the second one would be that one does not need to have a background in sport to be a sports event, to be in the sports events industry or in the events industry for that matter. I did not come from a sports management background. I did not study that in school, but I was able to enter this field. And if you are curious to hear, and if our friends in the audience are curious to hear more about the different um, backgrounds of our sport professionals from Ignites, for example, you can actually go on to, again to our social medias yeah. and we have a series called Ignite Showcases in which you can hear the stories of our different sports uh, professionals and our events professionals and experts um, where we hear many stories of courage and perseverance and the little madness that goes behind the scenes in, um, in all these experiences. But you'll see that you do not need to have a background in sports to join this family. So hopefully these things will be apparent through the course. Okay, thank you for all three or three our course coordinator. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for your description. Now we know about Ignites, we know about Sports Event Management Foundation Level 1 course and um, until then uh, we, uh, we Wish that, Zarina, thank you for your cooperation. Yes, yeah. I just I've got something just small to add. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just before we round up, uh, no, I want to say a special thank you to you. Uh, actually, uh, Zarina is just not a, a, a staff in our academy who happens to be the victim selected to be the moderator of a very <laughs> difficult session today. Uh, you know, but. Uh, she is actually the, the person behind helping me to coordinate this entire three pulse program. Uh, and uh, she works very hard, uh, you know, coordinating uh, the, the responses, uh, running the sneak previews. Uh, and, and we are running almost concurrent, close to nine to ten things in a day of different uh, magnitudes. You know, so thank you very much, Zarina. I know this is definitely not easy. Uh, but the reason why <laughs> I asked you, you to moderate that for uh, your support, said, uh, always. Uh, so thank the reason you. why I asked you to moderate this because it's important for us to showcase in event management, the people who are in the learning curve. Uh, so you have done very well, uh, you know, and you're working very hard. So thank you from all of us uh, today uh, to you, Zarina, and you're doing a great job as a course coordinator. That's really from my heart. 
Thank you so much, Dato. Thank you for your support. <laughs> I, okay. Um, thank you to all of you. Thank you for your cooperation and hope we are looking forward for another program. And uh, for the viewers, uh, we will announce the timing of each module in the coming days. And thank you also to our, de uh, our dedicated team of Sports Academy, our lovely director, our boss, <laughs> Prof. Dato' Shamala, um, technical team and all audience and our partner Ignites. And um, don't forget uh, and please like, follow and share our Facebook page at UPM Sports Academy and Ignites uh, website, social media sites for updates, info and activities. So don't forget to register this uh, course, Sports Event Management Foundation Level 1 course, which coming soon. So until then, see you next. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>